The cybersecurity kill chain by Lockheed Martin walks us through the seven sequential steps an attacker will commonly follow during an attack. In my previous video, we took a look at how the entire process usually starts with open source intelligence, or OSINT for short. We went over the popular OSINT tools like Multigo and Harvester that facilitate the information gathering process. In this video, we're going to look at the active reconnaissance tools and techniques that we can use to find holds or vulnerabilities in our target. We'll also see how taking the proper steps in these stages can minimize our exposure and reduce our risk of tripping security devices. Before we dive into the topic, please take a moment to hit like on the video to give me a boost in the YouTube algorithm, and subscribe if you want to see my future cybersecurity kill chain series where we'll take a deeper look into every step of the cybersecurity kill chain. Now let's dive into active reconnaissance. During the active reconnaissance phase, we're interacting directly with a target to gather information that can be utilized for later stages of the attack. Specifically, we're looking to find a vulnerability or weakness that can be weaponized in the next step of the kill chain. But even within this phase, there are incremental steps and processes that we take that go from low to high risk of exposure. Because we're making direct contact with the target, we want to minimize the noise and be strategic about how we use the information. That means we start with low risk items and then use that information in a careful and strategic way with the high risk ones. Low risk reconnaissance generally deal with fairly benign scans or queries that usually won't trip IDS or firewall devices. Medium risk consists of items that security devices are actively looking for, but if done correctly, can be accomplished with low risk. The high risk reconnaissance are classified as those that will definitely trip a security device that is configured correctly. However, as we'll see later, the idea would be to minimize the time spent in this area by using the information we've obtained early on. Let's start by looking at some of the low risk active reconnaissance techniques like DNS and SMTP enumeration. In the DNS enumeration phase, our goal is to obtain IP addresses of servers we can target. A corporation's DNS servers can, at a minimum, give us specific public IP information that we can focus on. A misconfigured DNS server can provide us with the internal IP schema of the company, or at best, allow for zone transfers, which is essentially a database dump of all IP resolution information. Tools like DNS Recon or DNS Enum are included in Kali and it can help do a lot of what would be manual work by automating attempts for zone transfers and querying for common subdomains like FTP or staging. DNS queries are considered very low risk, but attempting a zone transfer can cause red flags, so use with caution. In my example, I've used DNS Enum on a domain and found other interesting subdomains like this FTP server, which is probably used by the web admin for file transfers to the website. Now, if we decide to target the FTP server for our attack, we'll have much more success if we can find valid accounts that can be used to log in successfully. And that's where we can move on to SMTP enumeration to find valid accounts. The SMTP protocol supports interesting commands that we can use to find out more information about email accounts that belong to a particular domain. Using a simple netcat query to the MX server's IP address that we found in the previous step, we can use a verify command to check if a given user exists on the domain. The mail server will gladly tell us whether this is a valid account because it's a common exchange in the SMTP protocol itself. The goal here would be to check against common usernames like root or admin to find valid usernames that we can use for later attacks. Kali also includes a SWAX tool that includes everything you need to not only enumerate an SMTP server, but test using a variety of different options. Our enumeration phase has yielded some interesting information that we can use to narrow our scope for the next higher risk phases. Now that we have identified servers and usernames to work from, we may choose to use Nmap for port scans or service enumeration. Port scanning, even behind a proxy, can be considered high risk because even the most basic modern firewall and IPS devices have port scanning detection. However, there are a few things we can do to protect ourselves and lower our risk. Most notably are things like using decoys or spoofed IPs and slowing down our scan time. The nmap-d option allows us to use decoys as a way of spoofing the source IP of scans. This way, the target sees a different source IP trying to initiate different kinds of connections. To use a decoy option, simply provide a dash D option to the nmap command, followed by the different public IPs you would like to use as a spoof source. You can also leave it to nmap to decide what public IPs to use by typing in the RND following the dash D option. If we look at a Wireshark capture of the subsequent scans, we'll see that the source IP has been changed, which reduces the hits from a single source IP. It's worth noting that using decoys is not 100% foolproof. There are port scan detectors that can effectively see the original source of IPs, so always use this with caution. Also, there are some ISPs that filter spoofed packets, but it seems that this is pretty rare. 
When the decoy option is used in combination with a slow scan, it can prove to be quite effective at lowering your risk of detection by security devices. Nmap is an extremely powerful tool, and there's tons of great resources on YouTube to walk you through all of its capabilities, but always use with caution. For example, it's common to use OS fingerprinting and service enumeration during a scan. However, decoys will only work with port scanning and OS detection. That means that if you're banner grabbing or doing service enumeration, you can be exposed, putting you at a much higher risk of detection. However, finding out exactly what applications is running on a given port is crucial to a successful attack. Knowing that a port is open is usually not enough to be successful because we also need to know the application and the version number that's running on the given port. It's based off of this that we can move on to the next phase of the kill chain, which is weaponization, and find exploits for a specific application. While Nmap itself is not considered a full-fledged vulnerability scanner, it does have a good amount of built-in scripts called Nmap Scripting Engine, or NSE for short. NSC is essentially a library of scripts that can be used to detect and validate vulnerabilities. We can call NSC from Nmap using the dash dash script option, and from there we can search for the database using the dash help and put our search terms inside of quotes. For example, we can write FTP dash asterisk and discovery to find a list of FTP scripts under the discovery category. Once we have the script that we want to use, we can simply reference it by using the dash dash script followed by the script name and then target that we are after. This will run only the specific Nmap scan you have defined against our target. And that should be the goal after all, to be careful and specific about our scans so when we have to use these risky techniques, we're minimizing our interaction and hopefully lowering the risk of raising red flags. Of course, there are several vulnerability scanners that we can use, and Nmap is probably the most basic and easy to use from the batch. Some common examples include Nessus, OpenVAS, Burp Suite, Nikto, and of course, many more. Each scanner will have their own options and techniques to make as little noise as possible because ultimately, running any type of vulnerability scanner is the easiest way to set off a firewall or IDS device. Our goal for the reconnaissance phase is to find a weakness, any weakness. In the next step of the kill chain, we'll look to find a way to search for and actively exploit this weakness or vulnerability. And that does it for this video, you guys. I hope you found it informative. If you haven't already, please take a moment to hit like on this video to give me a boost in the YouTube algorithm and subscribe if you want to stay on top of my latest video releases. If you have any comments or suggestions, please put them down below or reach me directly at andy at the perspective.com.